Welcome to backpropagation. In this video, I'll take you through the calculations of backpropagation using simple network as we have shown here. So let's see what we have first. We have been given X, which is one of our input values. And the first layer of this network, we have two nodes, A1 and A2. The second layer is the output layer, which we have marked as A3. Obviously, what we have to understand is A3 has got two edges, which are input edges. Therefore, we do have W1 and W2 pre-initialized with some weights. And the output of this output layer, which is what we have given out as out, is our predicted value. Okay. So now, our goal is to understand how the backpropagation algorithm is going to be running and calculating the partial derivatives. First, loss is calculated with L is equal to target minus out the whole square. So this is a, a difference in the error from the predicted value, the whole square. That is what we are using as our loss function. The first step is we're going to be calculating the change in the loss function with respect to the change in the output, which is what is del L by del out standing here for. And Remember, this output is calculated based on the activation function. And this A3 value is a pre-activation value. So let's now take a look. We are going to be calculating the change in the output with respect to A3, which is the value before applying activation function. Okay. Next, we are going to again back propagate further through the uh, layers. And one of the things we're going to now do is we're going to ask for a change in A3 for a change in W1. So how much did A3 change for a unit of a change in W1? Same way we'll do that for W2 also, which is the change in A3 for a change in W2. After doing that, we are then going to actually be looking at what constituted the outputs in this cell, which is a1 was the value we had calculated in this cell before applying the activation function. And G1 was the value we had got after applying the activation function. Here we are interested in seeing how much my A1 has contributed to the changes in the weight of W1. So what we are doing is a partial derivative for W1 dW1 by da1. We further are going to apply the same thing again for the second node here. So we're looking at a partial derivative of how much my w2 is changed for a change in a2. For the node a1, again we have to calculate how much my a1 value changed with respect to my input value x. Similarly, we'll do that for node 2 also, which is how much my A2 value change with respect to a change in the input value of X. Following this calculation, following this particular formulation, what we can write as an overall change with respect to the loss function is the change in the loss function with respect to X, which is our input value, can be written as the entire equation on the top, which is del x by del out times del out by del a3 by del a3 times del w1 times del w1 by del w a times del a1 time by del a del x. This whole equation, now if we have multiplied them, plus we multiply all the terms again for the second path also. And that result has been added. And this was possible because of the chain rule in calculus.